All right, I'm gonna make a quick video here on uh, these cheap Harbor Freight tube notchers. I've been using one for several years and uh, picked up a few things along the way and just want to pass them along, possibly help somebody out. Uh, I was watching a video about the Amazon notcher that I believe possibly has a stronger framework on it than this one. I think this is probably quarter inch and I think the Amazon was probably 5 16ths or 3 8 And when you're notching, uh, rigidity is key to whole saw life. Because when you're about to go through and you're notch and you get to the end, if you've got flex, it lets that whole saw climb the tube and get it in a bind and pinch it. And that's what's going to break your teeth off and shorten your whole saw life. I get a ton of notches out of uh, these little cheap Linux whole saws from Lowe's. And I've never been, uh, felt like they didn't last as long as I should. I get them down to where there's like 8, 10, 12 teeth on them and they're still notching. And I'll replace them just because I feel bad for them, but they're still working so so they last a long time if you keep everything solid but uh next thing is going to be to i found that it works a lot better if you mount the thing in a vise instead of mounted in the drill press which is how i had this one the first few cages i built and if everything's not lined up perfect what's going to happen is you're going to take the bushings out in your block prematurely and mine ultimately were pretty much wiped out because of that and then that also makes it bind up worse uh, because you get slop in those bushings and like i said rigidity is very important so i went to a block from summit i forget how much it was but it's a bearing block and it's it's a replacement for the joint jigger the original one of these that this is kind of a copy of and uh that definitely straightened everything back up and it was a direct bolt-on uh, i did reshim which is pretty common on these to get that on the center line again and you shim with a washer between your your clamp and your frame move that up usually it's going to be low and if you have access to a mill you could also cut this block and lower that center line and do the same thing they usually don't need much you know around you know 60 to 100,000 something like that to get them back on center but if you don't want to buy one of those blocks and you've got your original block with worn out bushings you knock the bushings out and this is the bearing you need and you need to ream this out for the bearing. And you need to, it needs to be done on probably a mill or if you just use a reamer, it might be straight enough, but you gotta get that set so that that's a, uh, at least a, a solid tap fit. And then everything's gotta be straight or it's not gonna work on your, your shaft, it's gonna bind up. But if you want the low buck way, I think these are like 15 bucks. And like I said, if you have a way to ream that out, then you can go ahead and convert that over to bearings for basically next to nothing. But I, I got this one basically to sabotage and jack the bearing numbers off of. And I was going to build this one again as a backup. And I never got it done. And I never needed it anyways. But um, uh, the next thing was going to be the drill. I fought this with a cordless drill forever and was just constantly changing batteries and had one on the charger and was switching them out. And by the end of the night, you're, everything's dead and you're still ready to notch. And finally, I just bought a $25 a half inch drive drill from Lowe's that just plugs in and it just runs and runs and runs and you don't have to fight it that way and that was a, a step forward for sure i just leave it on the notcher and it's there if you need it for something else too like priming engines works good cordless batteries don't work very good for that because they run dead because of the high load and so i use it for that and this and it's worked out handy for that another thing i had a problem with was these these bolts stripped out going into the clamp so I just took a nut, put it on the back side, tack welded it, and we was back rolling again there. Uh, last thing was a uh, piece of uh, heater hose here. And that helps with when you're going through and you get to the very end and you're leaning with all your might and it breaks. When you slam it in, you hit that heater hose instead of uh, slamming the chuck into that bearing or the block. And that's something that's not necessary, but it... Like I said, it just takes some strain off of that. Maybe make, make that bearing last a little bit longer. Possibly. I don't know. But anyways, I use it. Uh, next thing. A tube stick out. I noticed a lot of people, and myself included, when I first started, when I wanted to notch something, I'd put it in there like that. And take a full notch. And there's really no need for that. You're just wasting time, wasting whole saw life. All you really need is about half or a little bit less and go in there and just trim your end off and you'll be in good shape. Uh, and also another trick is 
if you want to make like, let's say you got two equal length tubes, you can double your length and go ahead and put that in there like that. And you can cut that all the way through and have two pieces notched at the same time. But you kind of got to watch your overhang here because it's going to want to drop on you. But that's another little quick trip I've tip that I've picked up along the way also. So, um, next thing, uh, cutting oil. I just use cheap uh, thread cutting oil. I got that from Lowe's. Uh, you can buy a gallon from tractor supply or anything like that for like 20 bucks. I just usually take and put a little bit on here before I make my notch and that's it. And do that every notch and it Said I have no complaints with whole saw life. I don't know if it's helping or hurting or not making any difference, but it's just just part of my procedure. So, um, other than that, like I said, uh, also whenever you this thing I think goes up to sixty degrees, and anytime you get over about fifty to fifty five, when you make a notch, you're gonna have to do it in two stages. You're gonna have to you're gonna come in here, and your whole saw is gonna bottom out like right here. If you're coming in at this angle and you're going to take a, a cutoff wheel or a hacksaw or a sawzall and cut some of that scrap off of there before you can go ahead and finish your notch and that that's not they, they do sell deep hole saws that would help you alleviate that but i don't have them and like i said it just takes a second if you got a die grinder or a uh, four inch grinder set up with a cutoff wheel to just nip that off and then you can go ahead and, and plunge on through and make your cut so that's the gist of what I've got for you on the cheap ones. I was going to pimp my JD Tools one that I haven't done much with since I got it. But I got it and got all the swag stuff that they sell for it. And it really is a sweet piece. It's super rigid. Uh, your clamp moves. It clamps super close to your, to your end of your tube. Which actually this, this clamps 100 or cuts from 180 degrees. So you can do literally any angle of a cut. And then if you have this offset to the other side, that is like right up against the clamp and you can cut super close. And I've also got a deal they call the goat that lets you uh, clamp on a curve. And uh, so that's kind of handy. But like I said, this thing's pretty pimp. The, the swag stuff really took it to the next level. And, uh, but unfortunately, I bought that and like a week later, there's a company called BuildCo that decided they were going to design a notcher and they've designed honestly the one i would buy if i was going to buy one again because like i said rigidity is king and that thing is like built like a tank so you might take a look at those if you're looking at a higher end one but like i said this video is about the cheap ones and like i said i paid 30 bucks for that i think they're like 60 from harbor freight and i think the one off amazon's 100 but that'll get you in and that's going to let you do basically i mean really anything that a hobbyist is going to need to do if you're doing it for a living you know step up and get a good one but if you're just building a race car, building one or building one every five years or one a year or whatever, then they'll definitely let you get your feet wet and figure out if it's something you want to stick with. So I think that is everything that I wanted to cover on that. So I tried to keep it under five minutes, didn't get it done, but tried not to BS any. So anyways, uh, hope this helps you all out.